Hi there, hi everyone. So uh, first and foremost, I would like to take this opportunity to um, present our our work on the multifaceted impact of the pandemic. Um, I would like to thank um, my PIDS family for mounting this event, especially to Dr. Celia Reyes, uh, our former PIDS president for leading this very important endeavor. So this study is basically an accumulation of studies that uh, we conducted during the earlier uh, phases of the, of the pandemic. So just a caveat, um, most of the data um, for this presentation were collected during the first year of the pandemic and needs updating. Uh, nonetheless, the findings of these study um, remains very relevant. Um, the study therefore reinforces that we researchers and decision makers need to continue monitor critical health indicators as we transition into uh, the new normal. So as um, mentioned by Dr. Reyes a while ago, the COVID-19 pandemic has caused significant mortality and morbidity, not only in the Philippines, um, but globally, right? Um, typically, um, especially during the earlier stages of the pandemic, we measured the burden of the pandemic using death or COVID death and infection rates. However, these indicators were usually um, and, and these two indicators were usually the sole basis of pandemic response. However, we argue in this study um, that these numbers barely represent the overall health impact of the pandemic. So during the earlier stages of the pandemic or during the earlier phases of the pandemic, we wanted to explore the unmeasured health impact of the pandemic that were not captured by the, the usual COVID death and infection rates. Therefore, the objective of the of the papers are, uh, the paper um, uh, are the following. So, number one, we wanted to measure the magnitude of decline of healthcare services during the pandemic, um, and two, we want we also wanted to estimate the cost of both mortality and morbidity due to uh, COVID and non-COVID um, um, illnesses. Next slide, please. Just a little bit of background. Um, during the height of the pandemic, many countries have reported extreme disruption in the healthcare system. Uh, for example, in Africa, they had noticed that a uh, significant decline in maternal and child healthcare services. In the US, they experienced around 20 to 40% decline in hospital admissions. Um, in, in India and in Pakistan, for example, they, um, they experienced a huge decline in TB. Uh, maternal and child healthcare services and reproductive health. And many countries experience this one. Um, according to the World Health Organization, about 90% of countries reported disruption in essential healthcare services during the first year of the pandemic. Um, and most low, middle, and income countries like the Philippines are more likely to suffer uh, from the wrath uh, because of the relatively weak healthcare system. Next slide, please. In the Philippines, um, capturing the magnitude of decline of healthcare services um, not related to COVID during the height of the pandemic was relatively hard um, because of institutional challenges. So number one is the lack of consolidated data uh, from electronic medical records from hospitals and primary care providers. We, we do not have a better understanding what's happening um, during that period. Number two is poor surveillance reporting. So as you may know, or people working this, uh, in, in the healthcare sector, surveillance data are, are submitted uh, uh, um, two years late. So we cannot measure uh, what's happening also in rural health units or in our local communities. And lastly, during the height of the pandemic, no one was interested in, in, in immunization or what's happening to our patients with hypertension. Everyone was like um, um, busy with COVID. Um, because of that lack, because of that lack of data or interest, um, um, we wanted to explore um, two data. Uh, we want to explore data collection options for us to describe a looming public health crisis. So number one, so we did two things. Number one, um, uh, next slide. So, so we wanted to do things. Number one, we want to examine raw data from PhilHealth. We wanted to know whether there was a decline in claims. And number two, we wanted to collect admissions data from government hospitals and rural health units using survey. So 
we basically wanted to examine monthly and quarterly trends of uptake of essential healthcare services that um in relative that are relatively low to begin with right um next slide in addition to understanding the magnitude of decline of healthcare services we also wanted to calculate the productivity losses due to mortality and morbidity of um i mean morbidity attributed to covid and non covid during the pandemic so here we try to calculate the dalis or the disability adjusted life years um which is basically the sum of life years lost because of premature death uh because of covid and non covid and the disability uh um uh and the resulting uh uh disability due to the morbidity of both covid and non covid i would not go through the mathematical intuition behind this analysis but uh we wanted to calculate four important estimates so number one is the years life loss due to covid-19 premature death number two is years life loss due to disability due to covid-19 morbidity number three is years life loss due to the delayed care uh, lack of hospitalization because of lockdowns etc three is years life loss uh due to disability uh because of non covid-19 morbidities or uh decline in critical healthcare services like men, in, number uh, an example of this is increase in mental health decline in child immunization um increase in food insecurity miss hiv tb treatment hiv or tb treatment uh, uh increase metabolic risk like hyper, uh, hypertension or um or diabetes uh and lack of physical inactivity after calculating the disability adjusted life years the cost associated with those losses um we uh, uh we, we tried to calculate the losses um using average wages and for the impact of dalis um of the decline of services such, such as child immunization or h or miss hiv tb treatment or increase of metabolic conditions we use um, an epidemiologic method called the population attributable fraction um, um to estimate the decline or reduction in dalis uh we use many we use many data sources here from national surveys administrative data uh and uh, uh, and other uh, and, and lots of assumptions next slide okay so let's go now to the results so after analyzing the hospital level data from philhealth um what we see here is a huge decline um in medical claims for 12 high burden conditions which account for the majority of um uh or about 80% of the country's disease burden so and the average decline in 2020 was 57% compared um to the same period in the previous year so 57% is a huge decline so the number of of um claims remained relatively low uh with no signs of recovery even the third quarter of 2020 i don't know what happened in 2021 but the whole 2020 there was a sustained um decline in 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 field health claims so for procedural claims like chemotherapy cataract surgery we did not see large decline next slide here if we examine by disease um um acute gastroenteritis which is a very common uh disease for children asthma chronic pulmonary disease and pneumonia suffered 60% decline so these these conditions are very very common um in the population especially children so can you imagine 60 to 70% decline during co during the height of the pandemic other than covid uh other than communicable diseases such as chronic kidney disease cancer stroke um declined about 20 to 30% it's 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 smaller because i think it's i mean the decline is smaller because these are are more serious uh, i mean life threatening um but if you look at procedural claims like c section cataract chemotherapy hemodialysis and vaginal delivery um only uh we did not see decline in hemodialysis in c section the rest of the the procedures we've examined Uh, uh demonstrated large decline so we had another study but we will not be discussing here and it was published in 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 the regional uh journal of the lancet 
which further examined the decline in inpatient claims for this condition by, by insurance membership. And based on, our, on, on, on that follow-up studies, the large decline in claims um, was, was, was reported among the sponsored or the poor indigent um, uh, members of PhilHealth. So there is an inequity angle happening in that in, in, in this story. Next slide. In the next slide. Okay. So this just shows you. Um, we wanted to show. We wanted to to examine the decline by different hospital types and provincial socioeconomic standing. So for medical claims, we for medical claims by hospital type, we see um, um, uh, uh, decline in all types of level whether public or private right but for for procedural claims um we see a compensatory mechanism going on here uh in public hospital level three hospital you see large decline but in other types of hospitals like private hospitals we uh we they did not um experience any declines in claims so the the the, the gist or the story here is that the level three public hospital um um, suffered large decline, maybe because they shifted into an into a COVID facility. Right. Next slide. So now we look at the results for our survey of hospitals and rural health units. So using admissions data from selected government hospital, we estimated the median admissions a by quarter because monthly was hard to get. So we 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 only obtain quarterly data and patient type. So we we categorize the admissions by adult medicine, surgery, pediatrics, and ob -GYN. And what you see here is the pediatric cases uh, suffered large decline and in, and in inter an adult and in adult internal medicine. If and and for surgery and ob -GYN, you see recovery and small decline. So I think the gist here is the brunt of the pandemic really happened in, 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 in vulnerable segments of the population, particularly children. Next slide. Now we'll look at the admissions or visits in rural health units. So the, the previous slide look at hospitals. For this one, the number of consultations in rural health units significantly declined as well, particularly um, vulnerable population. So we look at the uh, visits of under five, you see in the left figure, large and sustained decline among under five and, and, and elderly population. Next slide. So we also look at um, the coverage of critical public health programs. Um, they suffered a major blow um, I mean, they, they, they suffered large decline, and this is, a, this is a major blow to the country's effort in achieving health system targets. So using RHU data, you see here um, declines in TB dots um, um, or, or the consultations for TB or, or TB treatment called the direct observed therapy for, for TB. Um, and we did not see any improvement in the fourth quarter of 2020. For 2021, we don't know. We're still examining whether the decline was sustained or there was a recovery. But that would be very interesting to see. Okay, next slide. Um, this one just shows you the program data from the Department of Health, um, just reinforcing the decline in, in the uptake of critical public health programs like TB dots and HIV. You see decline in 2020. For example, almost 49% uh, decline in number of tested TB, um, number of um, num number of diagnosed and treated and relapsed and new relapsed TB also decline. So you will see large uh, decline in many many uh, TB indicators and similarly for HIV. Just to back up the story in our survey. Next slide. Okay, so that's for the first objective. Another objective is to examine the economic costs um, uh, attributed to, to health uh, because of COVID and non-COVID illnesses. Um, based on our estimation, the total lifetime years cost um, um, because of COVID and non-COVID is around two to, two to four trillion pesos, right? But for this one, we, we we put the lower end estimate, so 2.2 trillion pesos. So for COVID premature death, around 94 billion, that's the lifetime years um, 
is the lifetime cost of, of COVID premature death. Non-COVID death due to lack of healthcare around 400 billion. And I want, we want to emphasize that the, the cost of non-COVID death is actually much, much higher than the COVID premature death. Um, and you also estimated um, the foregone wages because of morbidity. So for COVID morbidity, we included long COVID, around 65 billion pesos, that's the lifetime cost. And for non-COVID morbidities, as I've said, lack of immunization, decline in immunization, um, increase in food insecurity, et cetera. Um, we estimated that around 1.7 trillion pesos. So when you, when you add this, the total cost, at least for health, is around 2.2 trillion pesos. And that's the lower end estimates. So our higher end estimates are around 3 to 4 trillion. So um, next slide, please. This is just a few um, takeaways or the gist of the story. Um, children bear the brunt, uh, the brunt of the pandemic. Um, another important um, um, uh, lesson from here or message here is that the uptake of most healthcare services remained below the pre-pandemic level throughout uh, the year 2020. What happened to 2021 must be must be evaluated or must be examined, right? That there's no substantial recovery in 2020 and we don't know what happened in 2021. Number two is rearrangement of healthcare services and healthcare resources was, was very apparent during the pandemic. Um, and in the paper, our recommendations revolve around strengthening health system, um, um, pushing for the implementation of U UHC, which looks at conditions in a more holistic fashion, looking at not only COVID, but looking at other conditions that actually um, um, implications on population health and well-being. So that's that's the story behind, um, or that's the recommendations in, in the paper, in pushing for UHC and uh, for genuine health reform. So I think this, this is the gist of, of our study on the multifaceted impact of the pandemic. So thank you.